Joma Vera, how are you? Alexander, my brother, how are you? All right, we are 50 now, so I shall kick off. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, my name is Dr. Chen Akano. So today, we shall be discussing a very, yet a very important medical condition called peptic ulcer disease. It is called peptic ulcer disease, which people commonly refer to as ulcer. So we shall start. When we say peptic, I spell peptic in case people don't know is P for Peter, E for Echo, P for Peter, T for Tango, I for India, C for Charlie, peptic. And peptic has to do with anything that deals with digestion or where the lumen contains acid. That's what peptic is. So we're talking about peptic ulcer disease. So what is an ulcer? Generally, an ulcer is a kind of wound or a sore anywhere. So any wound or sore, whether it's in the leg, whether it's in the testa, whether it's in the eye, whether it's in the nose, is called an ulcer. So you can find ulcer in nearly everywhere in the body. But peptic ulcer disease is the kind of ulcer which is a sore or wound in the internal continuity of part of the gastrointestinal tract, gut. So I will explain what gastro intestinal tract. Simply, gastro means stomach, intestine means either small or large intestine. So that's what um, gastro, but the gastrointestinal tract starts from the mouth. From the mouth, you go to the oesophagus, which is also called gullet. From the oesophagus, you, go to, uh, you enter the stomach. From the stomach, you enter the small intestine. With the small intestine basically is made up of three distinct parts. The, the earlier part, the first part is called duodenum, the middle part is called jejunum, and the later part is called ileum or ileum, depending on where you're, you're based. Then from there you go to the large intestine. But for the purposes of peptic ulcer disease, we will limit ourselves with the esophagus, the, the stomach, and the upper part of the small intestine known as duodenum. So I've defined what peptic ulcer is. So it is a sore, or a wound, or a break in the continuity, of, especially in the internal lining of the upper and um, lower esophagus, the stomach, or the upper part of the intestine called duodenum. So basically, peptic ulcer disease is a gastric ulcer, which is ulcer of the stomach, duodenal ulcer, ulcer of the duodenum, and then a little bit uh, ulcer of the lower part of the cephalus. So this is peptic ulcer disease that we're talking about. So the ulcer, like what I'm saying, can be found in the stomach, in the duodenum, and to a lesser degree, the lower part of your gullet. So that's what peptic ulcer disease is. So who can suffer from this disease? Anybody? Children, men, women, but children and older people are usually asymptomatic. They may not have symptoms unless things have gotten worse, unless maybe they have complications, they may have symptoms. But it's a very common disease worldwide. It affects whites, black, Asians, everybody. So it's a very important disease. Peptic ulcer disease, very important. And it has been misunderstood by a lot of people. And so I hope that after tonight, we would understand it better and understand what is causing it, how to treat it, how to prevent it, and how to diagnose it. And also the complications and the relationship between this condition and uh, um, gut cancer. So I hope that at the end of the day, we take something away that we didn't know before. So, the next thing to talk about is what are the risk factors? What can put you at risk of developing this ulcer? So, I, I'll probably stop calling it peptic ulcer disease to make it simpler, ulcer. But you know that when I say ulcer, I mean peptic ulcer disease, not the ulcer in your eye or in your mouth or in your leg. 
So what puts you at risk of developing ulcer? One, if you have a family history of ulcer, if people in your family suffer from ulcer, you're at risk. If you take medications for pain, which we call non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, like what you call fervine, cataflam, ibuprofen, naproxen, meloxicam, fervine, medications along that line, even aspirin, put you at risk of developing ulcer, especially when you take high dose and when you take it for a long time. There's another medication that puts you at risk of developing ulcer if you take them. They are called corticosteroids. Things like prednisolone, dexamethasone. These are oral steroids that when you take them, they put you at risk. Also, smoking puts you at risk of developing ulcer. Excessive alcohol consumption puts you at risk of developing ulcer. It's just things that increase your risk of developing them. Developing ulcer, they don't really mean that they cause it. They may not cause it, but they put you at heightened risk. Or if you have had maybe a traumatic, um, very serious operation, surgical operation, you may develop ulcer. You may. These are the things that put you at risk. You know? And um, so the next thing we've got to talk about now, which is very important, uh, what are the causes of ulcer? We need to learn this now. What are the causes of ulcer? These are absolute causes, not risk factors. There are two main causes of ulcer. Number one is an infection in your gut, which is called Helicobacter pylori, which they used to call Campylobacter pylori in the past, but it's called Helicobacter pylori. It's a gram-negative bacteria. Very important. Know it. Helicobacter pylori is a common cause of ulcer. Number two, prolonged or usage of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which I mentioned before, ibuprofen, naproxen, diclofenac, paroxicam, meloxicam, indomethacine. Those medications can cause ulcer. It, uh, those medications can increase your risk to develop an ulcer as well as cause ulcer. But most, the most commonest cause of ulcer is this bacteria called Helicobacter, Helicobacter pylori. So it's an infection that is causing this ulcer. It is not your food, it's not the food you're eating that is causing the ulcer. So some people, um, uh, the other uh, conditions that have been um, identified to cause ulcer, something like uh, a syndrome called zollinger ellison syndrome, where you have a kind of tumor that produces a lot of acid and all that. So, um, but the main job causes of ulcer are Helicobacter pylori and use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which I'll be calling, referring to as NSAID. NSAID. NSAID means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And these are things like ibuprofen, diclofenac, paroxicam, meloxicam, indomethacin, naproxen, things like that. These are medications that would cause ulcer. So let me, there's something I need to make you clear. In the stomach is a lot of acid, which we call hydrochloric acid, which, are, which is quite, um, uh, which can, you know, uh, kind of um, wear away your, or erode the lumens of the intestines and stomach, especially the stomach. But there's a protective mucus on them that prevents this acid from causing this problem normally. So if you don't have ulcer, your stomach has hydrochloric acid. It's a very corrosive acid. But your stomach is lined with mucus that prevents this acid from causing a problem, causing any damage. So it's only when you have this infection or you're taking this anti-inflammatory NSAID for a long time, that this lining, this mucous uh, membrane, is a uh, mucous uh, thickening, is undermined. And when it's undermined, then the hydrochloric acid now has the ability and potency to cause um, damage and cause the ulcer. So is the acid in your stomach, in your duodenum, and also uh, upper esophagus that cause this ulcer? And they only happen when there's an inf infection or you're taking anti-inflammatory. So I am going to be discussing uh, those, that, those causes in detail. So, I'll, before I come to Helicobacter pylori, 
let's talk about prevention of ulcer. How do you prevent ulcer? Number one, avoiding taking all these NSAID, NSAID non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If possible, if possible, don't take ibuprofen, don't take uh, naproxen, if possible. But if you have to take them, and especially when you're older than 45 years, you may need to take what we call protective medication to stop the anti-inflammatory from causing the havoc. So we normally use what we call proton pump inhibitor, tablets called proton pump inhibitor. That's what we usually, usually use. Things like omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, medications like that. There's also an indication to use the ones we call H2 blockers, but less they're not as popular as uh, the proton pump inhibitors in this. The H2 blockers are things like samethidine, ranitidine, you don't want to talk about tagamere, you know, things like that. And then there's also another medication called misoprostol, which you can use to prevent the, the havoc that NSAIDs, NSAID is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, can cause for you. So that's one. Two, obviously, cut down on your drinking, quit smoking, lose weight. These are, you know, um, things you can do to prevent. And then you may want to ask, what of diet? In the olden days, we used to say, oh, if you eat spicy food, if you do that, if you eat that, it will cause ulcer for you. But there is no evidence that those food stuff substances cause ulcer. Even though if you already have ulcer and you eat certain sub substances, it may aggravate your ulcer. But pepper, chili, would not cause ulcer. Co coffee will not cause ulcer. Caffeine, tea, they will not cause ulcer. They don't cause ulcer. Even though we used to believe that they did, but they don't. So we've talked about prevention. We've talked about cause. We've defined ulcer. So we we're going to talk about what are the symptoms of ulcer. What are the symptoms that a patient would have and a doctor would say, you suffer from peptic ulcer disease? They say common things occur commonly. So I start with pain, abdominal pain. Abdominal pain, which could be sharp, which could be burning, which could be aching. Usually, in the upper part of the stomach, where we call epigastrum, that's where you have that pain. But the pain could be anywhere between your navel and your breastbone. You can have that pain. So this is what we call, this is what uh, the commonest call, uh, symptom of peptic ulcer is pain. That pain, which will, you know, like I said, it could happen between your navel and your uh, breastbone. But it's usually at the tip, at the lower tip of your breastbone, that area, and we we'll refer to it as epigastric pain. But I will need to differentiate something between the pain of gastric ulcer and the pain of duodenal ulcer. Gastric ulcer is pain in the stomach, I mean ulcer in the stomach, while duodenal ulcer is the ulcer in the duodenum. Duodenum is the first part of the intestine, where the stomach, you know it, is where we store food. When you eat food, the food goes from your mouth through your gullet into your stomach. And it's in the stomach that you store the food and you digest the food. So after digesting the food, the food, the stomach muscle push, pushes the food into the intestine. And it's in the intestine that more digestion and absorption take place. So when you um, have your gastric ulcer, if you have a gastric ulcer, your pain is worsened by eating. So if you eat and your pain is worse, then that's a gastric ulcer, typical. Why duodenal ulcer pain is that pain that wakes you up at night? That pain is improved by eating. So, if you eat now and you don't have pain, two, three hours later, you start having pain. That's Jordan ulcer. And then when you eat, the pain is better. That's Jordan ulcer pain. Why the gastric ulcer pain? When you eat, the pain is worse. And it may be associated with nausea and vomiting. That is gastric ulcer. That is stomach ulcer. While the other ulcer 
improves with pain. That's why people with jordan loss are more likely to add weight, while people with stomach ulcer are more likely to lose weight because you have pain when you eat, and that stops you from eating. So the symptoms of this ulcer, number one, is pain. Second, bloatedness. You can be bloated, belching, heartburn, loss of appetite, weight loss, weight gain, as I explained now. It now also depends on how severe it is. If you have developed complications, you may have other symptoms. You know, I will go into complications later, but I will just briefly touch it, that if you have ulcer, you may vomit blood, which we call hematemesis. You can also pass dark, smelly, tarry stool that look like coal tar, and that's due to also bleeding. You may feel weak, you know, weakness, dizziness you know and you may pass out so these are the symptoms of ulcer epigastric pain or any abdominal pain which is either worsened by food or improved by food depending on the location of the ulcer weight loss or weight gain nausea vomiting bloatedness heartburn belching these are all symptoms of ulcer so now i've talked i think i've covered uh what is ulcer i've covered them um, uh, where they occur in the body i've covered them um, epidemiology risk factors causes prevention symptoms but i will need to come back to helicobacter pylori which is what is important first so helicobacter pylori is this infection, gram-negative infection, that is implicated in most cases of ulcer. It's an infection, and it's contagious infection, which you can get through, you know, fic oral from contaminated food, from, you know, from um, contaminated drinks. You can also pass through sex. It's, it's a, you know, it's, um, it is not quite understood how um, it passes, but it is a contagious infection, and that is the most common cause of ulcer. So, so when you know that, I will discuss it further when I'm talking about diagnosis. I will discuss it further when I'm talking about treatment of ulcer. So let me just recap it for the purposes of people that just came on board that peptic ulcer is ulcer in the lower esophagus, in the stomach, and the upper lower intestine called duodenum. And the ulcer in the stomach is called gastric ulcer. The ulcer in the duodenum is called duodenal ulcer. And the ulcer in the oesophagus is called oesophageal ulcer. Even though the oesophageal ulcer is less common. This is what we call, this is what we know, refer to as peptic ulcer disease. It happens in men, it happens in women, commoner in women though. It happens in children, it happens in elderly people. So, and it happens to black, it happens to white. So it's not a, so it's a very common disease. It can be life-threatening. It could lead to all sorts of things, which I'm going to talk about shortly. It can be treatable. It could be curable, but it may it turn into a chronic disease, means it's off and on, which a lot of people suffer. So that's um, that. We talked about uh, how to prevent it, you know, stopping to take anti-inflammatory medications if possible. And if you have to take anti-inflammatory for whatever reason, uh, then you have to take a protective medication with it. And I mentioned protective medications that we use commonly are what we call proton pump inhibitors, which we refer to as PPIs, common ones you see everywhere, omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, they are there. So if you take them uh, along with the anti-inflammatory, and I also forgot that if you're taking all this anti-inflammatory, you must take them after food or with food. Do not take them on empty stomach. These are the ways to prevent them. You have to eat before you take them. All right? So this is um, prevention. And then I've talked about symptoms, epigastric pain. I've talked about nausea and vomiting. I've talked about hematemesis, that's vomiting of blood. I've talked about melina stools, you know. I've talked about bloatedness, heartburn, belching, weight loss, weight gain. These are all the symptoms of, um, of um, ulcer. So, uh, how do you diagnose ulcer? You want to ask. And it's very important you listen attentively to this. 
how do you diagnose ulcer? First, it are the symptoms. So these symptoms, when you come to go to a doctor, doctor, I'm having a heartburn, I'm, uh, you know, I'm belching, I'm, you know. So the doctor would, uh, sorry for the disruption. This is, I'm in Nigeria, you know. <laughs> so, so, so the doctor would diagnose you with um, peptic ulcer disease at that point in time. And then he doesn't need to do any investigation. It will just, it could just start your medication. So the doctor usually will start you on the uh, family of med uh, medication we call um, proton pump inhibitors, normally. And, um, you know, which are like lansoprazole, lomeprazole, you know, pantoprazole and all that. And he, he, may, uh, he may decide to treat you for four weeks and see whether your symptoms will, will resolve. Some other people use the H2 blockers like ranitidine. Ranitidine is the commoner, uh, the one that is most used now of that family. You know, some other people use some other things. And then you may also be given um, uh, protective medications like gaviscon, things to line the, um, the ulcer. While the uh, PPIs and H2 blockers, I mean, when I say PPIs, I'm talking about lansoprazole and uh, omeprazole. While they help to reduce the production of um, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, you know, the uh, Gaviscon and things like that, be smooth and all that, just to line the ulcer, you know, like coat, put a coat in on, on top of the ulcer to stop it from causing you pain. But that's, um, you know, brave. So, so when you're treated for that four weeks and your symptoms resolve fine, the doctor can ask you, you know, give you advice and ask you to come back if you have symptoms again and things like that and advise you what to eat, what not to eat, what not to do, you know, things like that. You know, ask you to lose weight, ask you to stop smoking, ask you to cut down on your alcohol, ask you not to take anti-inflammatory again, anti-inflammatory drugs like that and all that. But if the symptoms don't um, improve or if the symptoms you presented with have been issue initially were very severe, like hematemesis, that's vomiting of blood, weight loss, and um, anorexia, that's loss of appetite or passing them um, dark stools, you know. Or if you're very old at the time of presentation, you know, the, um, you will be referred for further investigation. The, the gold standard now of what we call upper endoscopy, where the, uh, the um, doctor who's doing the investigation will pass like a telescope with a camera through your your gullet into your stomach and visualize your stomach and your intestine and see whether there are ulcers there. They will see with their eyes. And then also, I mean, you need them um, to go through anesthesia to do that, you know. And then um, the advantage of this one is, apart from the fact that the uh, operator would see your stomach with uh, this camera and see with the ulcer. And then the, you can also take a biopsy you know, for to check for Helicobacter pylori, or can also take a biopsy to check for cancer. I will talk about that in a, in a moment. So with this endoscopy, with this endoscopy, um, you uh, you can make a diagnosis. And also, uh, we used to do um, what we call um, barium studies, especially um, barium swallow, where um, the patient will be asked to swallow a liquid which contains barium, and then an X-ray will be done, and then through that X-ray, the ulcer can be seen. That is not as popular as um, uh, gastro endoscopy because um, sometimes it, it doesn't reveal, reveal the ulcers. So I've talked about endoscopy, that's gastro... Um, upper endoscopy and barium meal. But I need to now talk about how do you diagnose Helicobacter pylori, which is this infection that causes this ulcer. What tests you do? So like I said before, if you went for an endoscopy, the sample can be taken for that uh, test to be done. But if you didn't do endoscopy, you can do, um, there's something we call um, C. urea breath test. It's called C. urea breath test. So this test is a, a kind of test where um, the patient drinks um, a radioactive substance that contains carbon. And then after drinking it, um, the patient will be asked to breathe into a bag. And then if carbon dioxide, radio, radioactive carbon dioxide is found in that, 
in, in that bag, then you, you, it's confirmed that it's got um, Helicobacter pylori. That's called C urea test. But we can also do it through a blood test to check for antibodies. We can also do it through a stool test. So these are the ways. You can also do it through a biopsy. These are the ways you can diagnose Helicobacter pylori, which causes most of the ulcers. I hope I'm making sense. So this is the way to diagnose this ulcer. Diagnosis is based on symptoms and based on checking for Helicobacter pylori and also doing um, uh, endoscopy if um, you got to that stage or beron swallow, you know, where you swallow that liquid and then have an x-ray. So this is how to diagnose. So the next question is, what the next thing we're going to talk about are complications and treatments for now, before we talk about the element of cancer. Because I know people want to know the relationship between ulcer and cancer. So let's talk about the um, complications of these conditions. So this condition rather. So um, like I said before, if you have peptic ulcer disease, you may be asymptomatic, meaning you don't have symptoms, especially in older people and children, unless when the symptom become complicated and when the condition becomes complicated and then you start having symptoms and also um in older people so what are the common com uh, complications of this disorder the most commonest um, the commonest complication is what we call uh internal intestinal bleeding you will bleed especially upper gastrointestinal from the stomach up or well, uh, you know or from the um, jeju um jodenum up you can bleed so when you bleed, depending on how severe, if the bleeding is severe, it can be life-threatening that you'll be rushed to hospital. But, and then what is the evidence? What are the symptoms of intestinal bleeding, upper intestinal bleeding? You will vomit blood, what we call hematemesis. You'll pass, you know, uh, dark smelling, uh, like quotas to which we call melina. You may have severe abdominal pain, worse than it was before. You may have, you may become um, light-headed, you may become dizzy because you're bleeding. So this is in uh, um, intestinal um, bleeding, and that's the commonest complication of peptic ulcer disease. So if you suffer from ulcer and you're passing black stools that are smelly or you're cough, uh, vomiting blood, then that means you're bleeding. It may be that you're bleeding, but that's the cause of that. So the next complication, second next common complication, is what we call perforation. So because you have a wound in your stomach or your um, esophagus or the upper part of your intestine, the ulcer may you know, continue and erode the um, intestine or the stomach and it will burst open. So you, you, you perforate it. And then normally, like I said last time I talked about typhoid, the lining of the, uh, of the abdomen called peritoneum. Uh, peritoneum is very sterile. There is no infection in it. There is nothing else there. But if you have a burst, uh, a perforation like that, the contents of your stomach or your duodenum would be deposited into that originally sterile peritoneum. And it causes a very serious and life-threatening condition known as peritonitis. And what are the symptoms? How would you know you've had peritonitis? The pain will get worse. Your stomach will become very rigid. In fact, there will be little or no movement in your stomach, and the pain will be excruciating. If you talk, if you move, any movement is pain. Any shifting is pain. You know? so, and you will, the person will need to be rushed to the hospital for an emergency operation. So I've talked about the bleeding. I've talked about the peritonitis. There are also something we call penetration. There are some times that if the, um, the ulcer uh, perforates, you, uh, that ulcer can penetrate from the intestine, wherever it is, to the liver, to the pancreas, and you have ulcers there. That's what we call penetration. You can also have, cause, uh, have what we call intestinal obstruction. You're in, you're, the lower part of your stomach or the upper part of your uh, lower inte um, small intestine may be obstructed, blocked. So there will be no, there's no way you can pass food from the stomach to the intestine. So what happens? The pain gets worse. You vomit and vomit and vomit and vomit. You may not, yeah, at some point, you may even become constipated. But pain and vomiting are the um, main symptoms of that. 
And then another complication that you want to know is cancer. Can, um, ulcer of the duodenum does not usually cause cancer. But gastric ulcer has been known to cause cancer. But the, the, case, the, case, the number of cases are quite minimal. But it is documented, it's there, you can have ulcer, gastric ulcer, from uh, gastric cancer from gastric ulcer. So that's what knowing. So when you have gastric ulcer, the symptoms change. Weight loss, bone pain, the pain gets worse, you're, you know, passing blood in your poo, you know, you become, I mean, obviously look quite unwell and, you know, have the telltale signs of cancer. So these are the complications of um, ulcer. So the next thing to talk about is... Um, how do you treat ulcer? How do you treat it? I'm sure a lot of people want to know that. So, first and foremost, if you were not taking anti-inflammatory medication before you developed ulcer, anti-inflammatory medications, like I've mentioned before, ibuprofen, naproxen, meloxicam, indomethacin, cataflam, fervin, if you're not taking it before you develop this ulcer, we would assume that your ulcer was caused by this bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. But if your ulcer was caused by, because you are taking all this medication, we would ask you to stop taking the medication. So when you stop taking these NSAIDs, then we will prescribe you uh, the PPIs, which I, I mentioned before, proton pump inhibitors like lansoprazole, omeprazole, pantoprazole, and you take it for four weeks, six weeks, Usually, it may, things may improve and the pain resolves and the ulcer may heal because the essence of treatment is to uh, reduce pain, heal the ulcer, and prevent complications. This medication can do this. Apart, if you're not on PPIs, you can be on another family of medications, other medications which will refer to as H2 blockers that's antihistamine kind of blockers like uh zantac that's ranitidine samitidine even though ran, um, ranitidine is the um, more popular one that we use the, uh, these days so this is how to treat this type of cancer now but if you are not taking anti um and and say then you develop ulcer we assume that is your ulcer was caused by Helicobacter pylori. We will want to do the test. I mentioned this uh, C-urea breath test, we, um, the blood test or the stool test. In the UK, we do more of stool and blood tests. And then if it's positive, you will take a treatment that we refer to as triple therapy or quadruple therapy. Triple therapy. Triple means three, quadruple means four. What is triple therapy? Triple therapy is a combination of three medications. Number one will be two antibiotics for the triple therapy and ulcer medication. So the antibiotics are usually clarithromycin, clarithromycin, sorry, clarithromycin, 500 milligrams twice a day, or and then uh, either flagyl, which is referred to as metronidazole, or amoxicillin. Either with clarithromycin, and then you will take anti uh, ulcer medications like omeprazole. We tend to prefer pantoprazole in this management. So you're going to take a combination of pantoprazole, clarithromycin, and either amoxicillin or metronidazole for a minimum of seven days to two weeks. That's triple therapy. But because of um, drug resistance, some, some schools of thought believe in um, quadruple therapy. So quadruple therapy means you're taking this pantoprazole, you're taking clitromycin, which is an antibiotics, you're taking metronidazole, which is an antibiotics, you're taking amoxicillin, which is an antibiotics for 7 to 14 days. So if you take it for 7 to 14 days, chances are that you may be healed. If you're not healed, we may want to repeat the treatment and then put you on uh, uh, 
or some medication a longer time to help the healing and all that. But if it doesn't work, we will refer you to have a camera down your throat into your stomach and your test tank, which I, I call upper endoscopy or gastroscopia. So this is how to manage this. But if you do have complications, if you have developed complications like bleeding, then obviously, or uh, perforation, or cancer, or penetration, the treatment will involve surgical, surgical and more invasive treatment. So it is also worth knowing that symptoms of stomach cancer can present like ulcer. You may just start having the same pain of ulcer and you think you have ulcer, but you have cancer. So that's why whenever you are treated with the routine conventional treatment and you don't get better, you will need to go for further investigation, which is endoscopy, which is our gold standard. A camera will be passed under anesthesia through your throat, into your stomach and intestine, and the doctor who's doing it will visualize and see your stomach and see whether there is an ulcer there or whether there is a growth there and take a biopsy. So let me see whether there's anything I haven't remembered. I've talked about a diet, complications, and all that. So like I said before, in the olden days, we say, oh, don't, um, if your ulcer was caused by coffee, caused by spicy food. No, there's no evidence that uh, chili, caffeine, and all those things cause ulcer. Pineapple, rice, you know, cause ulcer. But obviously, um, um, it can, um, if you already have ulcer, and um, those things irritate you, don't eat them. So I think I've covered the topics I want to talk about. Define ulcer, uh, what's peptic ulcer disease, where does it happen, epidemiology, risk factors, causes, prevention, symptoms, complications, how to diagnose, how to treat, and um, talked about diet pretty much about um, peptic ulcer. So I will um, have a look at the questions you've asked and see how to respond to them. I'm a bit, um, a bit dehydrated in the zoo. I don't think this much water when I'm in the UK, now, of course. Uh, so let's see. Oh, okay, no data. Uh, I haven't got an answer to that. Um, all this no data. I want to see any question that needs answering. So, I am searching for questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't... Kedos, I'm, I'm happy. Your first time. There's always a first time. Oh, dear, my sister. Okay. Let me see whether there's any question that I need to answer. Um, I haven't seen any question here. Uh, <laughs> please, easy with your grammar because it's too much. No, I think I was as basic as possible, wasn't I? Somebody asked me, is gastric ulcer same as, same as pe peptic ulcer? How do I answer? I said before that peptic ulcer means ulcer in the lower oesophagus, in the stomach, and in the, up, or in the duodenum. And the ulcer in the stomach is known as gastric ulcer. Stomach is gastric. So peptic ulcer is a combination of gastric ulcer, Jordan Lossa and the Savoja Lossa. So that should answer your question, if you heard me. So, please, what are the causes of peptic ulcer? So, uh, I don't know, you know, it looks like these questions came before I spoke about them. So, I, I'm suspecting, I've spoken, to, um, I'm said, I've said a lot about them. Can someone suffering from peptic ulcer fast during church events? 
Uh, I don't know the implications, but um, if you if you have ulcer, I would expect you to eat. You know. So I'm not going to tell you not to fast before your pastor will come after me. What's your say on using Sita Akuta leaves? That I'm, I'm only an orthodox doctor. I don't know anything about um, herbal or native medications or homeopathic medications, so I can't help you with that. Yeah. How can I tell the difference between an ulcer and a stomach flu? I forgot, I don't know what you mean. What causes peptic ulcer? I suspect these questions came later after I spoke. Is there a drug that can cure ulcer permanently? I've talked about the cure. So I don't have... You know. Can stomach ulcer cause erectile dysfunction? No. Stomach ulcer has nothing to do with uh, erection. Absolutely nothing. So, diclofenac drugs can cause ulcer. Comedian, yes. Diclofenac can cause ulcer. Diclofenac belongs to that group of medications known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And they can cause ulcer, especially when you take them for a long time or at a high dose. Or and if you took them on empty stomach, you are at risk. What are the natural things we can use to cure it? No, I don't, I don't know anything about nature. Hmm. Yeah. These names are hard. I will save the video and then you should you can listen to them at your own time and understand the names. No. So they are saying that I'm too fast. Wait, was I too fast? I don't know how how else I could be slower. Yeah. Somebody is asking me what's the topic. Hmm. Yeah, Oluchi Isaac asked me what is Miss Mag what of Miss Mag. Miss Mag is a uh, Miss Magnesium Trisilicate. It is not um it, it, it belongs to the um, class of medications that just protect the ulcer. It's like a, 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 a protective covering on the ulcer. It does not um, reduce the acid. It just, you know, then um, the essence is to reduce the pain. But it works um, temporary, I mean, in a short while. And after the, the pain will continue. So it's just a temporary, um, you know, and sometimes it's not even advisable to take them, especially when you take them yeah, with other medications at the same time it may affect the uh, as absorption of those medications and they will not work well yeah so why well, i just wonder why people are saying i'm too fast <laughs> i don't know what this is No, 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 Sarah, people who have difficulty in breathing or soft throat, uh, could, could it be defined as ulcer of the esophagus? No, not really. Not really. Um, but I know that um, there's something we call uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, where the acid is regurgitating from the stomach into the esophagus. It can cause cough, it can cause pain, it can cause difficulty in a difficulty with um, swallowing, not breathing. Yeah. Effugent. I do have pain when I wake up in the morning, but once I eat, it's gone. So this sounds like duodenal ulcer. So this is the kind of um, ulcer that um, you wake up and in pain. And then when you eat, the pain goes. 
while the stomach ulcer, when you eat, the pain is worse. Thank you, precious. Can this disease cause back pain? Yes, um, if you do have a penetrative complication, you know, um, yes, it can, do, it can happen if you have complications. You want to learn about the diet part. It, it, there's no evidence that any diet, that's, I'm talking about to Uba Wendy, that any diet, cause, any diet causes uh, this ulcers. There's no evidence that any diet causes it. You know, but obviously some diets uh, can worsen it if you already have it. Can one have both? All, uh, both um, um, peptic, um, you mean both gastric and duodenal? It is possible. It is possible to have them. But usually people have just one. Yeah, pregnancy can um, in, um, is a risk factor actually because of the stress. It's a risk factor. Pregnancy is a risk factor. <laughs> Calm down. So. What is the relationship between ulcer and cancer? I've answered it before. I've drank water. Thank you, Dozier. How are you? Can ulcer cause miscarriage? No. Ulcer doesn't cause miscarriage. Do you see the question, babe? That me, eh? I'm going, I'm... Uh... Can scan also view it? You, you don't use ultrasound scan to diagnose ulcer, but you can use CT scan, yes. But if it's ultrasound, no, but CT scan, yes. But you would have to uh, have taken the barium. I can't, I can't even differentiate between peptic ulcer and heartburn. Heartburn is one of the symptoms of peptic ulcer. Marco Achuku. Heartburn is a symptom of peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer is the disease while heartburn is a heartburn is a symptom. Yeah, I'll talk to them. Well, let me see what else is. Can ulcer cause knee pain and chest pain? No. Ulcer doesn't cause knee pain. Definitely not. Peritonitis, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Gold. Hold on, hold on. Amalachuku Zelu. They said your own is Helicobacter pylori. Uh, if your own is H. pylori, uh, I didn't add that H. pylori also increases your risk of having them. Um, cancer from the ulcer so it's good to get it treated and it's treated with triple or quadruple therapy which i explained before i am not explaining this medication for you to run to the chemist yourself we don't always advise people to speak to um, a doctor or something but triple therapy would be uh, clarithromycin with either amoxicillin or metronidazole plus Pantoprazole. You're not going to be a doctor just overnight, but this is what you use to treat it. Then what quadruple therapy is when you use the uh, pantoprazole, clarithromycin, amoxicillin, metronidazole. 
you know, and sometimes due to resistance, you know, medication like tetracycline have can also be used. So it is not for you to become a doctor tonight. It's just for you to get a feel of this problem. So, Miss, um, 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 sad to hear about the the death of your baby, but I'm not talking about um, that issue at the moment. I'm I'm discussing um, peptic ulcer disease. Yeah. Okay, Marco, if, if you have if you do have ulcer, and you have to take fervin and diclofenac all the time, then your ulcer would um, perpetuate. But obviously, um, you can use other painkillers for your menstrual cramps. You can use things like coco uh, codeine, you know, cocodamol, you know, that um, uh, um, codidromol. You know, they don't contain anti-inflammatory in them. You know, even some people use anti-spasmodics like uh, boscopan, maybe verin, and it helps their menstrual pain. But if you have ulcer, you're not advisable to take all this anti-inflammatory. You don't. You're not advised to take them. And when you, if your ulcer is uh, caused by uh, Helicobacter pylori, and you are also taking anti-inflammatory, the the ease of uh, the risk of complication is higher. So I don't advise you to continue on that uh, trajectory, uh, Makwa. Spell the first one. Say so please spell the first one. What? Which first one? First one of it? What? First one of medication or what? Amalachuku. Yeah, I should um, list all the medication. You said yes. I do not know why it is common in women, but it's a predisposition that we know. If I want also on sex, I mean, um, the all, the sex part is that um, it's possible to transmit uh, Helicobacter pylori through sex. And this helicobacter bacter pylori is the main um, cause of ulcer. Is the medication morning or night or daily? I don't actually like to do self-medication, but um, uh, something like the pantoprazole is once a day, while the clitromycin is twice a day. Metronidazole is either two or three times a day. Amoxicillin is three times a day. So, the drugs needed to treat ulcer, no matter how much I mention them here, you probably won't understand them. I, I, I may have to write it down somewhere for you. The helical stuff is confusing. No, Helicobacter pylori can be confusing. It's the bacteria that causes ulcer. That's the name of the bacteria that causes ulcer. It's called Helicobacter pylori. That's the name. And it causes ulcer. And it can be contacted through food, through contaminated food, drinks, through sex. And it's not very clear about all these things, but Helicobacter pylori is incriminated or... Uh, um, identified in more than 50% cases of ulcer, more than. So it is important. Ginger and garlic, no, ginger and garlic does not cause ulcer. No, it doesn't. Kodi, kodi hygiene, it doesn't at all. Do they have natural treatment? Like I've said before, I don't know anything about natural treatment. If a pregnant woman have ulcer, what a pregnant woman can take the um, these medications I mentioned. It, it, they they they're not um, they don't affect they don't cause any problem with the baby. Please, when your stomach is paining you after eating, is is it a sign of the ulcer? <laughs> it, it, I, I've been saying that that pain after food is a sign of ulcer. I'm not saying that that's the only thing that can cause that, but if you eat and you have pain, that is a sign of ulcer. 
It may also be a sign of other things, including cancer of the stomach. It could be, you know, it could be anything, irritable bowel syndrome, diabetic. It could be anything, but it is, it is, it is um, a possibility. Yeah, chamaka fostina with ulcer, you may, you may um, eat a little and feel um, overfed. It's due to um, the acid and also gas that is released um, in ulcer. This one is asking me what causes the ulcer. Don't know. What causes the ulcer is the same thing that causes um, peptic ulcer. Alexander, uh, anger and um, not eating do not cause ulcer but obviously if you have ulcer already they may worsen it so i don't maybe is there another question you're seeing here that i haven't answered does ulcer cause constipation too no which ulcer is the kind of ulcer that affects the bone I don't understand your question. What do you mean by also that affects the bone? Equilon change. Yes, it is possible that you have also. Also doesn't normally cause headache. No, equilon change. It doesn't normally cause headache. No, um, I cannot, um, I cannot prescribe something for your dad uh, without knowing him or examining him and understanding his circumstances. This history you've given to me now is not enough for me to start prescribing here for him. If he does have hypertension and also developed heartburn, you know, I don't know. I don't know what medication. And then gestate on its own does not cure ulcer. Gestate is just a protective lining of the ulcer and then you can relieve the pain and then the pain comes back later so if it's ulcer then uh, and uh, he may need triple therapy if his ulcer is caused by uh, helicobacter pylori or if if not then he may just need to take um, lansoprazole or meprazole for a long time well fortunately i'm unable to help further on this Nigerian food and uh, people can eat. eat. Eat anything that um, your body likes as anything that you can um, tolerate. How can somebody know that he or she has ulcer? Sorry, I'm not going to be able to answer this one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Which of the diclofenac is good for ulcer of patient? Perpetua. I didn't say whether it's potassium or sodium. I just said diclofenac is an all anti inflammatory, not good for all sufficient, all of them, irrespective of the, chemi uh, the component chemical. Pregnancy and ulcer. Pregnancy puts put you at risk. What it, what it means is that with pregnancy, uh, your risk of developing ulcer is higher. Does peptic ulcer affect the bone? It does not. Peptic ulcer affects the oesophagus, the stomach, and the uh, lower, um, upper part of the small intestine called duodenum. And then if you have complications, well, maybe if you have penetration, it can affect your liver, your pancreas. So, but it doesn't affect bone. What pain relief is good for ulcer patients? If you do have uh, also pain. You take all this ulcer awesome medication, uh, but if you need to take painkillers, paracetamol is there. If it's not potent enough, codeine is there. You know, codeine is there. You know, these are medications that you can use for pain if uh, you do have ulcer. They are there. Okay? Does shall shop leave <laughs> because of ulcer? Oh my God, there's nothing I, would, I cannot... I will not hear. I, I have said it for umpteen times that I don't know natural medicine. You know, I don't know whether it cures us or not. It's also hereditary. It is not hereditary, 
what I mean, if um, you can run in a family, but not that you can say it's hereditary. It can run in the family. Favorite is or favorite is the can it cause headache, abdominal and neck pain. I think, um, did you see another question that I haven't answered? Huh? Angel, Onyi, Kenneth. Onyi said, please, I always have back aches, and they said it's ulcer. Can it be ulcer? It is possible, but it's unlikely. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Mark, what you said to you that if you have ulcer and you have menstrual pain, then you, you can take, um, if the, if the boscopan and landiness are not helping you, you can get um, diclofenac. In fact, um, I will um, find a way and give you some painkillers, and I'll send some painkillers to you that can help you. I think I have some. Thank you. Does heartburn have something to do with ulcer? I'm suspecting that you just um, joined. Heartburn is one of the symptoms of ulcer. Somebody said I'm uh, one of my young brothers. He said I'm adding a lot of weight. You know, the video makes makes it look as if um, you know, but serial? No, I'm not. I was told ulcer is caused by starvation. That is not true. Yes, you um, you, you can treat um, H. pylori and it doesn't go because there's a lot of resistance to this antibiotic. So they have to treat it again and probably change antibiotics. Yeah. But, I mean, if they try and it doesn't go, then you would need to go for endoscopy for a camera to be passed through your th uh, throat into your stomach to see what's happening there. What causes constipation? That's the, that's the talking for another day. Does um, OSA have a permanent cure? Yes. It, do, it does have a permanent cure. You could be treated permanently, but most people, um, it comes and goes and comes and goes. And, um, you know, you're late, yes? If I eat late hour, I will not get myself. What will I do? I don't know. I don't know what you do because I don't know what causes your own. What are the, okay, you just said you just joined and you're asking me what are the signs of ulcer. You will have to go and listen to the video later. Uh, what's your name? Um, Chidima Chukuma. Um, yeah? So, it's past 10, right? Okay, past nine. Can has also have. Uh, I think I've gone through all of it. I think I've gone through 
all the questions. So um, stay safe. Um, if, well, make sure you um, learn something. I'm going to save this video. And then you can watch it when you can. You know? I've, and then learn from it. I will be able to answer your questions that I haven't been able to answer today or that I didn't see if you um, send the, ans the questions on the video thread. Okay? So it's going to be good night. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And um, good night for watching. Um, thank you for watching. And good night. I shall be saving the video. And then um, if there are questions you have, feel free to write it under the video. Can also cause miscarriage. <laughs> uh, some of the questions make me laugh. Sorry that I laughed, but I had to laugh. Some of the raw pop is also helpful. Uh, okay, okay, guys. Good night and God bless. I will catch up some of the time. Thank you.